This video is sponsored by Noom. 40 minutes is all the time it takes to make these four hot mezza dishes, and my oh my are they worth it. We've got spicy potatoes with a garlic coriander seasoning, fried halloumi and all its cheesy goodness, pomegranate wings with a delicious sticky glaze, and finally zesty chicken liver which will blow your mind. My name is Obi and today on Middle East, I'm going to show you how to pull a mezza platter out of thin air. All these dishes are doable in 10 to 30 minutes on their own, or 40 minutes if you're a great multitasker. Let's get started. So, mezza dishes, what are they and why should you care? Think of it like the Middle Eastern version of Spanish tapas, but with way more exciting flavours. It's a collection of small dishes that can be made up of salads, dips, hot finger foods and even pastries. Go to nearly any Middle Eastern restaurant and you'll find these on the menu split into hot and cold categories. They make a great meal if you want loads of variety and they're a great way of trying many different things. Today's mezza dishes are focused on the Levant region of the Middle East, so these will have a more tangy flavour profile typical of the region. If you plan on cooking all four dishes in 40 minutes, I recommend you start with the wings as they only take a few minutes of active work. While they're cooking, make the potatoes and dress them. When both of those are almost done, cook the liver and set the cheese to fry. This way you can serve everything at the best possible temperature, which is super important for the last two. Starting with the wings, these are designed to be like the ones you'd get at most Lebanese and Syrian restaurants, but with the pomegranate flavour amped up. It's an evolved version of the first recipe I ever put on the channel, so check it out if you want to see what that looked like. In this bowl I've got 800 grams of chicken wings which have already been split into individual wing pieces. This recipe also works with larger pieces of chicken but keep in mind that they'll need to cook for longer. To the chicken you'll pour in my sticky pomegranate marinade which I found works with all kinds of meat. To make this take a small bowl and add 4 cloves of minced garlic then add in 1 teaspoon each of paprika, oregano and onion powder. Next add half a teaspoon of black pepper and a quarter each of cinnamon and ginger. Now add one and a half teaspoons of salt and follow that up with two tablespoons of pomegranate molasses. Finally add two tablespoons of lemon juice and then mix the marinade all together until it's one homogenous mixture. Pour the marinade over your chicken wings and get in there with your hands to work it into the chicken. Once you've got every wing coated in the marinade, you're supposed to coat them with two tablespoons of olive oil, which I totally forgot to do until later. To cook these wings the best option would be a grill, but failing that you can cook them in the oven like I do. Prepare an oven tray with a wire rack and start laying the wings out, leaving a small gap between them. Once done, I went back and brushed on the olive oil and the whole reason I didn't put it into the marinade was to ensure that the marinade actually sticks to the wings as it has done here. With the tray of wings done, I could put that into my oven, which I preheated to 180 degrees Celsius. After 20 minutes, I pulled the wings out of the oven and they're looking pretty good, but they are in need of a glaze. I flipped them all over, then I went back and brushed them all with a pomegranate glaze, which I made by combining 3 tablespoons of pomegranate molasses with half a teaspoon of chilli powder and a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. When that was all mixed, I brushed it onto the wings, making sure each one had a glossy coat. This went back into the oven for 5 more minutes, then I took it out, flipped the wings and glazed them one more time. I put them back in for a few more minutes and then they were nice and glossy with a sticky tangy glaze. I decorated these with some diced red chilli and some finely chopped coriander and now they're ready to be served. Next up are the spicy potatoes which are commonly called batata harra or batata bilkesbara. For this you'll need 1kg of roasting or frying potatoes and my personal favourite variety are Maris Piper. Go ahead and peel all of your potatoes then chop them into chunks about 1.5 to 2cm wide. To cook these we'll be frying them because it's a lot quicker than using the oven but I also have instructions for how to bake them in this older video. Now fill a pot with frying oil so it's a few inches deep and if you're multitasking do this while the wings are in the oven. Heat the oil to 180 degrees celsius then add in about half of your potatoes and let them fry for 10 minutes. What we're going to do is double fry them which is a technique that gives you a crispier potato that stays crunchy for longer. Don't believe me? Just listen to the sound of these potatoes. Double frying is really important because we're going to be coating these potatoes in a sauce and without this they'll instantly go soggy, plus who doesn't like crunchy potatoes? When the 10 minutes are up and the potatoes have a little colour, pull them out and place them on a baking tray which I lined with some paper towels. Let the oil heat again then add in your second batch of potatoes to cook just like the first one and now we'll make the sauce. First thing you need is a spicy red chilli and finally this one was one of the straightest chilies I've ever seen. Chop about half of it into rounds, then get out your pestle and mortar or you could just use a blender. Now add in 5 large cloves of garlic and about half a teaspoon of salt. Crush and grind that garlic until you end up with a paste, then add in your chopped red chilli. Mash this all together with another half a teaspoon of salt, then when it's all pasty add in 1 teaspoon of smoked paprika and half a teaspoon of black pepper. Give this another mix until it's homogenous, then work in 1 tablespoon of olive oil. You'll be left with this fantastic spicy coating which is great for potatoes but would also be amazing with other vegetables. To cook off the raw garlic, add 2 tablespoons of olive oil to a small pot, then add in all your spicy sauce. 
cook this on medium heat for about two to three minutes until it becomes really fragrant and the sauce is ready. While we're waiting for the second batch of potatoes to finish frying, let's take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Noom. Selma and I have been using Noom for a few weeks now to help us shed those pesky lockdown pounds. I'm one of those people who is perpetually yo-yo dieting, but I'm happy to report that after just a few weeks using Noom, I was looking and feeling way more confident when me and Selma went out for date night. With most weight loss programs, I really struggled to remain motivated after the first few days. But Noom has really helped me identify and overcome the actual causes of my failure. See, what makes Noom so different is that it uses cognitive behavioral therapy to teach you about bad patterns of your behavior so you can disrupt them. It also helps you develop new healthy habits that are way more likely to stick long term. All that's asked of you is to spend a few minutes per day with the program, where you'll be introduced to behavioral tools such as temptation bundling. That's a concept I learned about last week, where you take something you love to do such as listening to audiobooks and bundle it with something you should be doing, like going for a daily long walk. And it really works. I've been going on daily walks since I started the program, and it's become a firmly established habit now alongside something else I've been trying to do forever, drinking loads of water. Somehow this program has got me excited to check off one of my 8 cups per day, and I personally consider that a win. If you want to develop new healthy habits like me, take your free 30 second quiz using the link in my description. I also like how the program doesn't oversimplify or control things for you. You aren't told to banish or remove certain foods from your diet, but rather it uses a traffic light system to tell you which foods you should be wary of. Say you had some labneh atar and plump tomatoes in a pita bread, and you log those all in the program. It will show you which parts of your meal were calorie dense, which you should be mindful of not over consuming. So if you like the sound of a program which teaches you how to spot bad behaviours and learn loads of healthier ones, and all it needs is a few minutes per day, then head over to noon.com slash middle eats, or click the link in my description to take their free 30 second quiz and get started. Thank you Noom, now back to the video. Once your second batch of potatoes have finished their first fry, pull them out and drain them, then turn the heat of your oil up to 220 degrees celsius. When that oil is ready, add all of your potatoes in at the same time, and let them cook for about 5 minutes, until they turn a beautiful golden colour. Now you need to pull them out and let them drain on some fresh towels. Let the potatoes cool for 2-3 to three minutes, then add them into a bowl and combine them with all of the spicy sauce. Mix them really well until they're fully coated and that is precisely why we needed to double fry them. Now pour in 2 tablespoons of freshly squeezed lemon juice and add 2 tablespoons of finely chopped coriander. Give this one final mix and you'll be left with these wonderful spicy potatoes. To plate them I added a little more sliced red chilli and chopped coriander and these were looking perfect for our mezza spread. Personally, I love these spicy potatoes, and I'm sure that when you try these, you'll be making them all the time. Next up, we'll make our zesty chicken liver, which we'll be cooking with loads of garlic and lemon. And trust me, this dish is one of the best I've ever done on the channel. Now, I know that most people hate liver because of bad experiences, but the truth is it was probably overcooked. In a pan, add 3 tablespoons of oil and heat it up to high heat. Add in your chicken livers and let these fry for about 3 minutes until they're pretty much seared on all sides. Now add in 7 cloves of minced garlic and stir fry this with the liver for about one more minute. Add in 3 quarters of a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of chilli powder and half a teaspoon of black pepper. Mix this in then deglaze the pan with 4 tablespoons of lemon juice and a wonderful pan sauce should appear, which is exactly what we want. I cooked this for an additional 3 minutes bringing the total cooking time to 7 minutes and at this point it was cooked through. Chicken liver cooks a lot quicker than breast or thigh, which is why you should use a thermometer to check that it's reached a safe temperature. Finally, I added in about 4 tablespoons of chopped coriander and stirred it all together until it looked like this. To plate this up and make it look brighter, top it with some lemon zest and a little more chopped coriander. This liver should be eaten within 10 minutes of coming off the stove, so you get it at its juiciest texture. The final hot mezza is the easiest one of them all and one of the most popular, fried halloumi cheese. This can also be grilled really easily, so you'll just take a block of halloumi and dry it with a paper towel before cutting it into thick slices. In a frying pan, add about 2 tablespoons of oil and bring it to a medium high heat. When it's ready, add in the slices of halloumi, then every few minutes swirl the oil around to make sure it's evenly frying the cheese. Cook this for about 4 minutes and then flip each piece over when it's perfectly golden on the underside. Cook these for about 2-3 to three minutes more until the second side is golden, then remove them and plate them up right away. So that's how easy it is to whip up a hot mezza spread, and if you add on some supermarket dips, you can easily reach 6 or 7 dishes. Every one of these dishes is uniquely delicious, and I think it would be a great idea to serve this the next time you have friends over. Now, let's taste this. Alright, let's dig right in. Start with the liver. Mmm. If you don't like liver, you have to try this out. It is just insanely good. This is the best thing on the plate, I bet you. Let's go with the potatoes next. Mmm. Man, they're so full of flavour there. They're spicy and tangy and herby and 
everything you could want in a potato. Next up, let's go with the chicken wings. Mmm. I like sweet and sour and fruity. Mmm. So good. Mmm. It's just got such a satisfying texture and squeak to it. I think you'll all agree these dishes were so easy and quick to make. You've got a variety of dishes suitable for all types of eaters and every one of them is insanely delicious. Thank you for watching and thanks to Noon for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to check out their link below. A special thanks to all my patrons for supporting the channel and if you want another Meza video like this one, I'll be taking dish suggestions on the Patreon. Thank you and see you in the next video.